Okay, what's up everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Saturday edition of Morning Scout. Presented by Brock. The Baton Rouge Road Pedicle. Like where Brock, Brock, and Wine is going down tonight. So, if you are looking for something to do, and you are in the Baton Rouge area, it's going down at Tiger Stadium, South Stadium Club, tonight. Live music. Tons of wine, food from some of the best restaurants in Baton Rouge, and of course, scenic views of downtown from the South Stadium Club inside of Tiger Stadium. Very, very cool venue. Uh, Brock Rock and Wine tonight. Tickets are available at brortho.com or at the door. Uh, Hudkill Roofing, hudkillroofing.com. Restored Motions and Proch RGV. All right, y'all. Um, I hope your weekend's off to a fantastic start. Hope you had a great week. And uh, Saints training camp in full swing. Learned uh, yesterday Trey Turner done for the year. Torn quadricep. That stinks. So former LSU Tiger, of course, who uh, just signed with the Saints on Tuesday. And um, day three goes down with an injury. And uh, it's going to cost him the season. So Turner at 30 years old. Uh, fifth team in as many years after going Carolina. Chargers, uh, Steelers, Commanders, Saints. So fifth year in as many teams, fifth teams in as many years, fifth team in as many years for, excuse me. Um, but uh, when you look at Saints interior offensive line, they probably need to go add somebody now for depth, uh, at least for another camp body, if nothing else. So with Turner out, we'll see if they go add another uh, offensive guard. And then um, talked about it a bit on AFR yesterday, but I'm sure you saw it that um, uh, that uh, um, LSU got a visit from Bryce Underwood. Uh, Bryce Underwood is the number one player in the country for 2025. So he's a rising junior, and um, oh wait, Ronnie Duga said it won't load. What won't load? Um, are y'all having, can, I mean, I see the video here. Y'all good? Good. Um, um, so Bayou Splash event yesterday, uh, big success. Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback and number one overall player in the country for 2025, uh, came in. That's his third visit in the last four months to LSU. He's from Michigan. So keep in mind, these are unofficial visits. So he and his family have to pay his way here. So just think about you taking a trip anywhere three times in four months and paying for flights and hotel and food and all that sort of stuff. Like, that ain't cheap. And if you're going to make three visits in four months, you are serious about coming in. So um, really cool. Uh, you know, Brian Kelly continues to recruit Louisiana well and tap into the national pipeline. Uh, when they when they want to, when they need to, go outside of the state. So, all right, let's say some good morning. See what y'all got. Um, hope everybody's having a, a wonderful start to the weekend. Uh, Scott Beckham, good morning. Trivia Carter, good morning. Hey, trivia, did Erica get you your uh, your Drew candy bar yet? I wonder if Erica got trivia his Drew candy bar yet. I have too. Uh. Oh. Just like last year's? No, they're coming this week. Oh, this week? Before the next Sunday morning schedule, they'll be there. It'll yeah. happen. I was afraid this week was a little hot tomorrow. It was only a little hot Smash, I like that. Stop. I hate that word. Smash, I like that. I'm kill him for good. What do you hate? That word. What word? It sounds so dirty. It doesn't sound... Smash, I like that. I hate you. Doesn't it sound dirty? Smash that like button. Can we say hit that like button? Smash that like button. Stop. Leandra Lewis, good morning. I'm on your side, Trivia. She did you dirty, bro. She'd been saying for a year she was going to bring you. It melted. She was going to send you Drew candy bars. It melted in the car. And, and, they, and they didn't make any other Hershey bars. So, unfortunately, they stopped making Hershey bars and just couldn't send you. Anything. 
I didn't have any more wrappers. The wrapper ripped when I was taking it off the Hershey bar. We ran out of ink in the world to print new wrappers. Stop. Sorry, trivia. They stopped making Hershey bars and they ran out of ink to print new, and paper. They ran hey, out of ink and paper. Hey, we leave things in the past. We're moving forward. I have two for him, two there. Oh. Smash, I like that. Uh, uh, Eric Tross, good morning. Big UFC and boxing field fights tonight. Dude, I'm gonna be honest, I am really bummed I'm gonna miss it. Um, <laughs> Mark Allen said, hit the jingle, Matt. <laughs> Uh, I am, I really am bummed that I'm going to miss the, um, uh, that I'm going to miss the fights tonight. So, uh, tomorrow is e Rock's birthday and we're going to New Orleans tonight with some friends. We're going to go to dinner and stay down there and go out. So, uh, I'm excited. Don't get me wrong. We're going to go to dinner at Commander's Palace and we have reservations for, uh, for tonight. So, um. Well, good night, but I'm bummed I'm miss these fights. What? What you got? Are you really bummed to miss a fight and said doing my birthday? No, it's just like, it's a good, I'm just saying like it's a good fight card. Like if we weren't doing something, I'd watch the fights. No, I'd much rather go to Commanders and all. I just wish the fights weren't tonight, so I mean, you know what I mean? Okay. And there's also a boxing match tonight with um, er Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Smash, I like that. Bill Gallion, good morning. What's up with Joe? He, uh, I guess you mean Burrow. He's good. So he strained his calf at practice on Thursday. Uh, it was carted off. They weren't sure what it was, but they confirmed strained calf. So he's going to miss a couple weeks. So nothing, uh, nothing too serious. Chance Babin, did you get info on how the body splash went? Yeah, man. Look, any recruiting event is always going to go well, right? Remember, like recruits come in, uh, they roll out the red carpet, they get to eat, they get to hang out at the facility, meet the coaches and players. I mean, it's Recruiting events always go well. That's just the nature of them. It's, if you're if you're not putting on a good recruiting event, you suck, basically. So, yeah, I think the question is, you know, do they, do we get any public commits out of it? You know, we'll find that out soon. You know, um, if uh, if LSU was able to get anybody to commit. So, uh, Ronnie Duga, Joey Metge, Taz, hey Taz, what's going on, man? Should the Saints bring in? Uh, I guess me Quan Alexander uh, for backup role. Um, you know, man, I'm going to say no, Taz, as much, look, I love Quan, love the LSU guys, and when quan has been healthy in his career, he's been really good. The problem is Quan can't stay healthy, and, and I, I like the idea of bringing in a veteran linebacker, but I'd rather go with a young veteran who's, who's been healthy, um, because I do think you need options behind your two starters. And I don't know that I believe DeMarco Jackson is going to be the guy. At least he hadn't proven it. So I wouldn't make that assumption. I'd bring in somebody to compete with him. Um, so I do like the idea of bringing another linebacker, Taz. I just don't necessarily like the idea of bringing in Quan. Uh, Marcel Joseph, good morning, Bo Jacks. How high do you think the recruiting ranking in 2024 will be when it's all said and done? I have no idea, man. And I don't really care about the rankings, honestly. Like, I don't, I don't mean for that to be dismissive of your question. I really don't. But it's just like that part of it is subjective. So if you're one, two, three, four, five, whatever. I mean, just get really good players at positions of need. That's really what I want to see. So like, we've seen a lot of highly ranked classes that didn't pan out. I mean, look at the 2020 class. I mean, this is going to be the forever example. LSU's 2020 signing class, which was, I don't know, one of the top classes in the country. Eric Gilbert. Uh, Eli Ricks. Kayshawn Booty. Good start, not a great finish. Jaqueline Roy. B.J. Ojolari. Jacoby and Guillory. Jordan Tolles transferred. Philip Webb transferred. Trey Bradford, weird story. Transferred back, transferred back, and back again. Antoine Sampa transferred. Marcus Dumerville transferred. Josh White transferred. Eric Taylor transferred. 
uh, Alex Adams transferred, Ali Gay, uh, Marlon Martinez still hanging out. Cole Taylor transferred, Xavier Hill transferred, Dwight McLaughlin transferred, Coy Moore transferred, Max Johnson transferred, TJ Finley transferred. I mean, that was one of the top classes in the country that year. Uh, it was the fourth best, it was number four in the country in the composite. Like, so I really don't care, man, what the rank is. Like, just get get good players in positions of need is, is more what I'm concerned with. I think people look at transfer or at the class rankings and they want that like as a flex for other fans or message boards or whatever. I just don't care. Just get good players. Uh, Charlie Oliver. Um, so let's see. Shay and Billy got tons of info on three. Cool. Um, Ronnie, do, yeah, Myron, good morning. Do you think Leonard Fournette gets on a team or it's over? No, he'll play. Uh, or Monty Hayes, what's going on? Herbie got Holman from Alabama. Yes, he committed on Thursday. Uh, Luke Holman, pitcher from Alabama. Uh, righty, you know, was a guy through you know, 81 innings, made 15 starts this year for uh, for Alabama as their Friday guy. So um, I don't know that he comes in as LSU's Friday guy. He'll be able to push for it, but, but he'll definitely be in the rotation. Um... Matt got jokes this morning, you know, if I ain't Cliff, I ain't getting no love. Ooh. Well, in fairness, Trivia, I'll say this. Uh, I will say this, Trivia, that Erica has never mailed anybody else uh, cookies or treats or whatever. So, like, she does make the cookies, but she doesn't have to mail them, right? I, I just bring them to... Don Juan or the studio or stuff like that. So just for the record, I will defend that. Trivia said, you know, if I ain't Cliff, I ain't getting no love. Because we make you make cookies for Cliff. But the point is, okay. what I said is you don't mail those cookies. You just make them and then I bring them. Yeah. And I would say, yes, they're for Cliff. Well, you make the lemon cookies because Cliff loves them. But you make the cookies that started for T-Bob. Yeah. T-Bob's Tasty Tiger Treats. Yeah. It's just the, the melting part of the Hershey bar that gets me. Uh, Trivia Carter said, tell Larry I said what's up. Aw, Larry's in Seattle. He's saying that to be dismissive of you. Like, Trivia, it's my birthday weekend. Birthday week, it's her birthday month. Are you kidding me? What have you done for my birthday yet? This is weekend, it's tomorrow. You haven't done anything all month? Cut your nails yesterday. Yesterday, thank you. Cut your hair. You said that was for me doing, I asked that, and you said that was for me doing it was really for your birthday. great job. It was really for your birthday. You said no, Matt. Smash, I like that. Get the batteries run out. I'll just get the batteries. <clears throat> okay. Landon Weber, good morning from Shintech in Addis, getting them 12 hour shifts in. Landon, this is so weird that you mentioned Shintech. So years ago, I might've told you this, and if I did, I'm sorry to repeat, but uh, I, I, I did a program with the state, uh, or let me rephrase that. This, the state of Louisiana has a program called uh, Louisiana Fast Start. And they do a lot of video production and blah, 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 whatever. Well, they need people to do voiceovers for a lot of their video production. So they hired me at one point as a freelancer to do voiceover work. And I voiced like safety training videos for Shintech. So if you've gone through safety training at Shintech, chances are you, you've you seen one of the safety training videos that I voiced. Interesting. Brad David, why do you think Matt Canada did not work out well at LSU when his offense did so well at Pitt? Well, uh, for starters, he and Ed Ogeron hated each other. Um, they had to be physically separated in fall camp before the season even started. Ed Ogeron wanted to fire Matt Canada after the second game of the season, went to Joe Oliva to fire him, um, which, anyway. Uh, so you'd ask, well, why did he hire him to begin with? Well, that's because Derek Podamski recommended it to Ed and he hired him after one phone conversation. 
Um, yeah, Ed Ogeron, Ed Ogeron was a disaster. There's no way around it. I mean, he was a terrible head football coach. Um, so that's why it didn't work out. Uh, Ryan Pike, although there's good recruiting news with Underwood, anybody predicted LSU to lose a linebacker in this upcoming class to A&M. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Yeah, it happens. Um... Wendell Norman, strong side, good morning. Uh, can we get Iraq to sing the Hudco jingle? I don't think she heard. Yeah. Oh, she heard. She said no. Why not? Why not? You don't know the words. Drew knows the words. What? What? Drew knows the words. You know the words. Three six, three, six, four, one, oh, oh, seven. See, I need something like that. Yeah. You went into the uh, Diesel Driving Academy. <laughs> I Can I tell you something? What? That lick is from the Diesel Driving Academy thing. Oh, that's why I thought so. I guess we were my brain right there. We were going to do the whole thing. Yeah. To the Diesel Driving Academy theme. It, when you can drive a truck. You got a job. Um, and we tried, like me, so Toby, who did it, Tom Play, like we tried to reach out to these Driving Academy to get permission to use it yeah. and never heard back. But we were going to do, the whole jingle was going to be set to, <laughs> and so it's basically similar, but that one lick is sampled from the Diesel Driving Academy theme though. Yeah. Call Hudco Roofing. Three, two, four. Let's call 1 800 551. 900, whatever it was. Diesel Driving Academy. Okay. Our YouTube smash that like button, Facebook, please. A like page, share the post. Um, all right. Oh, there we go, Facebook peeps. Scott Beckham, Kevin Roy, good morning. Uh, Sean, Michael, Habet, Scone, we use the same system that you saw at Sunshine to keep our soybean rows straight. Dude, that was so cool. So, Sean, give a shout out to my people over at Sunshine. So, for those that miss it, um, look at my Instagram. I think it's on my Facebook as well. I went to, so, so Sunshine, uh, your Louisiana John Deere dealer, um, uh, is about to start sponsoring AFR. They're going to be the Tuesday title sponsor. And um, they've done some really cool stuff with uh, NIL. They've done Harold Perkins, Will Campbell, they had Emory Jones coming. There's another LSU player coming as well that they told me. I'm not going to spoil it yet. But um, um, anyway, so I, of course, if I'm ever going to endorse someone, I'm always going to go meet them. I want to meet the people. I want to see the business. I want to learn about them. Like, so anyway. So I went to Sunshine uh, in Donaldsonville yesterday, and forgive me, I don't know the model of the of the um, of the <laughs> of the ag equipment I was on, but it was a gigantic uh, tractor, I guess. But um, y'all, that was so cool. Like you understand why? Like you know, it's like when when you're a little boy. We're all fascinated. Oh, we all like we're all fascinated with big trucks. I mean, that's why they have like the touch of truck events and stuff like that. You know, you touch the tractors and fire trucks and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it was so cool, man. Like I was sitting in, the, you know, we're sitting inside in the office talking, like, hey, we're gonna go draw AFR in this field, and what? Because we're gonna show you how you can set the the component to where, you know, we just we draw it, and then the thing you just hit the button and it just drives itself. It just tracks. Um, and uh, and I'm like, I mean, I was excited. Now, of course, I would have done it, but I'm like, it's, it, it was like 11 o'clock, 11.30. I'm like, God, I'm going to sweat my behind. I mean, I'm in jeans and a dress shirt and all. And they're like, no, 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 it's, it's air conditioned. I was like, oh. So you go, you cl I climb up this big ladder. I mean, the, the, the tires are bigger than me, obviously. 
um, and you climb up the ladder to get into this thing, and then you're in this cab, and it's enormous. Like, I, I mean, I'm sitting in this big old seat, the captain's chair, basically. My legs completely spread out, you know. I got all the room in the world, AC pumping. We got the radio on in there. They got Bluetooth, you Bluetooth your phone, whatever. They got like a little ice chest back here. If you wanted to put like a little, little six pack on ice or something like that, set the thing, go in your field, just pop a cold one, something like that. It, it, it was so cool, man. I mean, it was like little boys in big trucks, man. It brought out the little boy. I mean, it was really cool. So anyway, shout out to Sunshine. I mean, look, they got all residential stuff, right? Like, you want zero-turn mowers and lawn equipment. I mean, they got all that stuff, too, of course. Um, you know, if you got, you, you live on an acre or something, it's, you, you know, I could use a push mower, you want to ride mower or something like that. They got, they got all that equipment as well. Uh, of course, it's John Deere. I mean, John Deere is the, is the, the premium brand that everybody knows. But, um, and so, so Sunshine is the John Deere dealer. But, of course, uh, just a massive part of what they do is they sell and, um, and maintenance, uh, Farm equipment and, you know, agriculture in Louisiana. It's, I mean, oil and gas, agriculture, got to be our two biggest um, uh, industries in the state. So um, so they service, obviously, tons of farmers. And uh, anyway, it was just cool. Uh, it, it's just something I've never done before. It, it was really cool to have that experience yesterday. So anyway, shout out, Sean. It's all the farmers, man. That's awesome. Uh, Bubba Smith, good morning. First time listening to AFR live on the drive from Houston to the camp. In Bama yesterday, Beaumont to BR. I love it. That's so cool. So you caught 1041 in Beaumont, then 1037 in Lafayette, then 1049 in Baton Rouge, and then 100.3 in New Orleans. That's awesome, man. So you came straight across I 10 and caught us. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Uh, Kelly Gross, Jay Borden, Jeff McKithen, what's going on? Matt French, good morning. Tractor ride looked fun, dude. It was, I'm telling you. I don't know that why or how you'd have an opportunity ever to get in in a giant tractor like that, but if you ever had the chance to do it, that was, I mean, even though I was in the thing for five minutes, it was really cool. Scott Becca, Matt, with all these transfer players and great recruiting, what are the numbers for baseball team for next season? Seems like Jay's going to have a tough decision to keep so many great players. Good problem, but still tough. Yeah, so Scott, I actually did this on AFR um, last week before they, um, they got the commitment from Luke Holman where I went through the numbers after the draft. And based on the signing class, the guys returning, um, and the transfers you brought in, I think they're already over, I think they're at 43 or 44. So keep in mind, you're only gonna have 40 players. So, and the roster's still at 40 because of COVID. This is the last year they've extended the roster to 40, then I presume it'll go back to 35. But, um, um, but yeah, so, um, um, so, yeah, I mean, they're going to have to process four or five players, I would think. Um, Sammy Merrifield, do you think Graham is a camp body? Uh, or do you think he has a shot to make the team? Um, I do not think Jimmy Graham makes the team. I've been out of football for a year. Juwan Johnson, Foster Morrow are making the team. Taysom Hill, obviously, is going to make the team. Do you have a spot for a fourth tight end? I don't know. I mean, maybe he, he wows and looks awesome, and and that would be great if he does. I mean, it would be fantastic if he does. I I would bet, though, that he does not. Um, I know there's the whole idea of, well, why do you sign him if he's not going to make the team? I mean, you want a camp body? You think he may have some gas left in the tank, so you bring him in. And we've seen that before. I mean, the Saints – remember the Saints had Champ Bailey? The Saints signed Champ Bailey, brought him in camp, and he didn't make the team. They cut him. Um, that happens. It happens. Uh, and then he asked about Lutz. Um, uh, Lutz's job is definitely in jeopardy. I mean, the way they restructured his deal and the way that it was restructured is he was definitely a potential cap casualty to, to get within the salary cap this year, but they restructured his deal and he's back. But, um, I think Blake group could absolutely beat him out. Time flies, Sonny Warmington, Cole, uh, Kobe Walker. How many games can the Saints win? Um, their their over under is nine and a half, so Vegas has them either at you know ten and seven or nine and eight, and that feels about right. Um, you know if the if the defense is you know phenomenal and Carr sort of drinks from the fountain of youth, could probably um, you know see that number pop up a little bit, but I think nine or ten is probably fair. 
Uh, Bruce Shales, morning, Matt. It's crazy asking after Skeens, Floyd, and company, but could we have an even deeper and more quality pitching staff next year? Um, so, I mean, remember, LSU never really established a number three this year. I mean, you went Skeens, Floyd, and then you had a lot of uh, turnover at the number three spot. So I think it's fair to say you, know, you could certainly have Heard. Um, Holman, uh, Herring, Ackenhausen, Coleman, uh, I know I'm leaving guys out that have started off the top. Um, that's five right there that are possible. Cam Johnson, the freshman lefty coming in. So, yeah, I mean, you could definitely have more, uh, more arms there that are, are possible. So, um, you know, the thing I'll, I'll remind you though is how dare, I know it took a while for roles to establish and all that sort of stuff, but you know, how different does LSU look last year if Garrett Edwards and Chase Shores are healthy? You know, adjusted lower, the transfer from Xavier, the lefty. I'll get, couldn't get over that rug. Um, Ryan Pike, who we betting on tonight? Poirier in the third? Yeah, I don't know. What are the odds on this fight? I mean, I, I like Poirier, and I do think he finishes. I don't, th this, this thing ain't going five. Um, that, that's for sure. Um, somebody, somebody's getting stopped in that fight. It's just, I mean, two heavy-handed dudes that like to brawl. And that is going to be a massively entertaining fight. And then, man... You know, Blahovich and Pereira is going to be awesome as well. Talking about UFC 291. Um, uh, I'm trying to find... There, sorry. So I'm trying to find the odds for the fight. So, let's see. So Poirier... Um, Poirier's minus 150. Gaethje's plus 125. Um, minus dollar fifty is a pretty big price. I mean, you could probably find um, better odds if you want to bet on a bet on a stoppage. If you have to pick the round, that's a little more challenging. But um, you know, Poirier by by TKO is probably you know what I would if I was going to make a bet on it. If you wanted to lay the juice of Poirier at one fifty, you can. But you got to I mean, you got to make it worth your while. But um, uh, I do like Poirier, and I do like Poirier, um, but, you know, by stoppage, so I'll go Poirier TKO. Um, strong side, good morning, Scone, happy birthday, E-Rock. Edward O, the Nussbus Driver, good morning. Cold Case, good morning. Philip Thomas, morning, Matt. Marshawn Lattimore, put MT. Whoops, hang on. Oh, wow. Uh, in Angola yesterday, people forget how good Lattimore is. Michael Thomas will be okay once he really gets his legs under him. Austin Kidder, good morning. Chico Lynch, good morning. Seems like the only threat to the Saints in the South is Atlanta. How close do you think the battle will be? Uh, I disagree with that, Chico. I think Carolina is the threat. Um, I have no idea how good Desmond Ritter is going to be. And the rest of that roster, I don't think, is very good. Now, Tampa is completely tanking. But you forget, brother. Carolina had the same record as you did last year. I mean, Carolina was 7-10, and 10, just like you were, and they beat you twice. And they've only gotten better. they got a better coach. they got a better quarterback. And he's, a, he's a rookie, but he's better. Hey, bud! Drew, come see. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Say hi, Dad Show. Hi, Dad Joe. Hey, oh. tell whose birthday is tomorrow on Sunday? Whose birthday is it on Sunday? Mommy's birthday. Yeah, what are you going to say? What? That's not as important as this. Whose birthday is today? Did you know t today is Olivia's birthday? Did you know that? Today is Olivia's birthday. What? Are you going to say, what are you going to say to Olivia when you see her today? 
Happy birthday, Olivia. Very good. Mwah. Yeah. We're going to go to main event for Olivia's birthday. We need to be in football. Okay. Main event. Main event. And you can see Uncle Jeff at main event and JJ. What's JJ going to say? What you going to say to JJ? The. Right. What are you going to say? I love you, JJ. No. Okay. okay. Now that I've now that I've done your song and dance, can I please have the iPad? Um. Brad, David, would you ever like to recover fruit recruiting full time? That sounds like a hard job. Brad, I would literally go sell widgets before I covered recruiting full time. I would go sell books door to door before I covered recruiting full time. Like respect to the guys that do it, but following high school athletes and trying to figure out where they're going to commit like uh, oh my god no never like literally never i mean the guys that do that they got a passion for it and that's awesome and that's why i lean on them because they're really good at it guys like shay and billy and um you know jared roser has done a really good job building the louisiana verse all they got a passion for it that's great like i do not so Man, no, no, no. That ain't for me. That ain't for me. Um, Murder Giraffe, good morning. Taz, why is Deion Jones still a free agent? Probably he's asking price. He'll sign somewhere. I'd rather, I'd, I tell you, I'd rather Saints sign Deion Jones than Quan. Austin Kidder, make sure at least 50% of your starters are four and five stars required to win a national championship. Not, not starters, 50% of your roster is the, um, is the cutoff. That's the uh, blue chip ratio. Uh, was Spears a consideration to get picked by the Saints? Spears? Talking about like Tajay Spears, running back? I'm sure he was. So, Joey B19, any game coin updates? I'm having lunch with David Mailer on Friday of this week. And um, uh, so in six days. And I will hope that we will have at that point scheduled our next AMA and we can get all these questions answered that, that all y'all have about it. But we are, uh, we're trucking along, man. I'm like, I'm re Hey, can you please turn that down? Yeah. Um, I am really getting excited again about, uh, Um, the Bitcoin halving is coming, um, this spring, uh, the XRP news was massive and, you know, this is the time where you accumulate people, you know, if you follow crypto at all, it's ever, it's, you know, people think they get rich in the bull market. You don't, you get rich in the bear market because you buy everything at a 90, 95% discount. And so... I'm building my bags, not just game coin, but all, 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 all of my tokens and I'm ready, dog. I'm ready. Uh, Troy, bear more Matt. Uh, Hey, Troy, what's going on, man? Was hang on. Sorry. Sorry. As always, brought to you by Brock. Brock Rock and Wine is tonight, y'all. Brock Rock and Wine is tonight, y'all. Brock Rock and Wine is tonight at Tiger Stadium. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Hudco's pinned in the chat. Love to give you that free, no obligation roofing inspection. Hudco Roofing. Uh, let's see, Troy. Uh, my wife wants to go see Williamson Eye Center for laser correction. She was wondering what the recovery time is. So, Troy, it depends what your, um, uh, what surgery she gets done right like if it's lasik which is what what i had like i was at work the next day um i mean you literally have the surgery they're going to tell you so like if you have it let's say you have it at noon they're going to say go home take some benadryl just fall asleep and then when you wake up a lot of the initial like itchiness and and discomfort is gone and then it's just every day Subsequent, your vision gets sharper and sharper. So you get, it's weird because immediately after the surgery, you can see, like you, you can see, but it just, there's a haze. But it, 
Like I, I could read something across the room. It's just a haze. And then every, every day the haze starts to dissipate as it gets sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper. But like I was driving the next day, you know what I mean? I was driving and at work the next day. I think I had to wear glasses just cause you know, your eyes are sensitive to light initially. But I mean, uh, Troy, it's so easy. Like, that was always one of my big concerns. Like, ah, oh, put a laser on my eye. Like, I was nerd. Like, that's one of the easiest. Uh, it's, it was so easy. Like, it was, like, it was so, it was such a non thing. I mean, it was like 10 minutes, you know, 12 minutes maybe for the op, for both eyes. Like, I mean, you're in and out. And you're, it was so easy. Anyway, could not recommend it highly enough. Shout out to Dr. Blake Williamson. Uh, Jason Mobile, driving back from Disney, catching up on AFR. He's got me through the last three hours. Seven more to go. The aliens were great. Have you ever been watching that alien stuff? I have, like, fallen down an alien rabbit hole this week after that guy, you know, testified about that, you know, that we have alien bodies and stuff. Uh, Trivia Carter, happy birthday month, E-Rock. Armani Hayes, any update on Montgomery? Nope, don't have one. Drake Landry, good morning from Drake at Shintech Plaquemine. All right, Drake. Good morning. Uh, Trivia said, happy birthday, Mom, D Rock. Thank you, Trivia. Very sweet. Smash, I like that. Well, why are you doing that? Smash, I like that. Lawrence Burley, good morning. Ronnie Duga, shout out to Donaldsonville. Yeah, man. Was out at Dville yesterday at Sunshine. Your Louisiana John Deere dealer. Um, they got 17 of those, uh, sunshine locations. And what's, what's interesting when we're looking at the map and the website, it's like, you start at Alexandria, it's like the whole Alexandria and South, it's just pfft, sunshines everywhere. I'm like, that's my entire, like, radio audience. New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Lake Charles, Alexandria, just pfft. Good partnership. Brennan Huff, what does the catching situation look like next year? Man, you're loaded. Um... I mean, Malazzo and Travinsky are back. Um, you've got um, Jones and Fry still available as well, obviously. But Fry played more outfield, and Jones is probably going to play first base. And then Brady Neal is probably going to be your starter when he's back. You got tons of options there. Strong side broke out the Pearl Jam Vitology album last night. Sounds so good on final. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Jamie Hodges, good morning. Perkins for Heisman. Matt, you should try to get Poirier on the show. So I've had Poirier on the show, and honestly, I hate to admit this, but last week when we were at SEC Media Days, I did. So I have a good relationship with the UFC because I've had a lot of their fighters on over the years, and they know that like I'm a UFC fan, and I go to events, and like they will. So they'll they'll kick me guys. I mean, I remember I had Dominic Reyes on before he fought John Jones. I've had Poirier several times. I've had DC. Like, whenever they have availability for fighters, they will they will kick them to me. Um, and they emailed me about Poirier last week while I was at Media Days, and I just missed the email because I was so, like, snowed under with Media Days. And so when I got back into the office this week on Monday... I saw it in email. I was like, hey, man, I'm so sorry. I just saw this. Um, does Dust himself any availability? At that point, he was already booked. So, um, but yeah, man, um, I, I'll, I'll have Dustin on again. Bill Frera, XRP with the, yeah, bro, XRP Army, man. That was, God, that was so big for, for the crypto industry and then not just for XRP. So for those who don't know, XRP is a, it's a crypto um, token and the, the company is, is Ripple, Ripple Labs. And so the SEC, the Security Exchange Commissions had filed a lawsuit against Ripple claiming that it was a security. Well, Ripple won the lawsuit saying that it is not a security. So that opens the door for every other crypto. So that opens the door for most likely, what we understand will be CBDCs, which are central bank digital currencies. Like, this is all going to happen. I mean, it's happening in other countries around the world already. And it's just, it is an inevitability because blockchain is Web3. I mean, you got to not think, in time, we'll all get educated on this. 
but it's so early right now still. It, think of it like early internet where, you know, you had real rudimentary dot coms, but it was so obvious, it, in hindsight, it's so obvious to see how people who are early could see, I'm gonna be able to sell stuff on the internet. It's gonna be, you know, I'll be able to do e-commerce on the web. And a lot of people 25 years ago couldn't fathom putting a credit card online, you know what I mean? But it's like that old, what is it like the Today Show with Katie Couric and they're like, this is your, your, your electronic mail. You know, they're like, it sounds so stupid now because it's such a part of life, but that's web three. It's like web one was obviously the dot com boom, web two was social media, web three is blockchain. I mean, it's like, we will transact on the blockchain. Like we will have all of our documents. I mean, you will, when you close on a house, you know, that, that'll be done on blockchain. When you get tickets to an event, your tickets will be NFTs, which is a non-fungible token. That means like you'll never, like you won't ever have to worry about a counterfeit ticket again. You'll be able to store that in perpetuity on the blockchain. So you'll have a digital asset as well. It's, I think people think NFTs and they think of all the, like the crappy digital art that a lot of people wasted money on, but it's like, some of them will win. Some, like some NFTs will, like uh, digital art will absolutely survive, but an NFT isn't just art, it's a non-fungible token. So I, po point is, the point is, the XRP news was huge for all of crypto and it will end up being huge for Gamecoin as well. All right, um, let's see, get Poirier on AFR with BMF belt in hand if he wins. Uh, so I think he's gonna win uh, and I would love to get him in studio. But uh, I've, when I've had him in the past, I just had him on the phone. Brian Pint, good morning from somewhere in Nebraska. Okay, safe travels, man. Damon Gilmore, be fair, stack, stack sats, baby. Yeah, bro. I mean, I like, I've got my DCA set, DCA, so it's dollar cost averaging, where just every day, every day, I got auto, auto buys on, on different crypto projects. So just auto, like not huge amounts, but, but when you start to compound over a long time, it's, it adds up. Perkins for Heisman, Matt, I'm super interested in the whole UAP alien stuff. I watched the whole video of the committee thing on it. Terry are talking about it yesterday. It was hilarious. Uh, also Perkins is an alien. Yes. Um, are, are y'all, are y'all interested in that? The alien thing? Um, and I, I, so I did not watch the entire hearing. I saw all, like a, a lot of the clips that would pop up on my, my TikTok or whatever. But, um, uh, I think that's so interesting, man. Like you had a, a, a military veteran who's worked on all these committees say before Congress under oath that we were in possession of crashed spacecraft and, or crashed aircraft and, um, uh, and, biologics from the recovery, non-human biologics from the recovery. It's just interesting, man. Like I've always assumed, and again, I like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, I have no idea. I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a citizen like all of you who I just, you know, whatever they tell us, I don't know. But, um, I've always looked at the universe and said, look how like gigantic the universe is. And the earth is such, is so tiny, this little speck in the universe. Like how could we possibly think we are it? Like we're the only thing that exists. I mean, like we're the only intelligent life. Like there's, that sort of defies logic. Um, and we know that UFOs exist, right? A UFO is necessarily an alien. A UFO is an unidentified flying object. There have been flying objects videoed that are unidentified. We don't know what they are. Could it be a military project? Maybe, I don't, I don't know. Could it be life from another planet? Maybe. That's just why it's interesting. It's like, do they really, have they really been sitting on stuff for 70 years that they haven't told us? And if not, why not? Are they worried like how we'll handle it? Then you start to go back and look at some of these interviews that people have done over the years, which is labeled as kooks. It's like, well, did they actually know something? Were they actually being forthcoming? Yeah, you know, there's there's guys that have, you know, men and women who have, you know, given testimony that the the government has been in communication with with 
intelligent alien life and yeah, that was part of the Kennedy assassination. I don't know if I believe that, but whatever. You know, people said Kennedy was going to expose that and so they killed him for, I mean, I don't know, but whatever. Y'all know I'm not a conspiracy theorist, so all that I don't know, but it's just interesting. Okay. Ben Boudreaux, who went Super Bowl first, Sean Payton or the Saints? Um, I mean, the odds would have to be on Payton because he's got a quarterback that's won a Super Bowl. Now, I know Russell Wilson's older, but Peyton is, is a coach that's won a Super Bowl. He's got a quarterback that's won a Super Bowl. The Saints have Derek Carr, who hasn't, and Dennis Allen, who hasn't. So when you look at coach quarterback, franchise, Peyton's won a Super Bowl, Wilson's won a Super Bowl, Denver won a Super Bowl in more recent time than the Saints did. So they kind of check all the boxes, if you're being honest. Dana Berthelot, good morning. Hey, Dad, good morning. Samuel Merrifield, Matt, I know you personally try the products and services you promote. Are there many media figures or personalities who do not actually use their companies or products? Um, he said, not asking for specific names, but in general. So, yeah, of course there are. Um, you know, I think there's... And no judgment here, by the way, but like, I think there are, um, I think there are absolutely people in media who I don't think I know that if someone's willing to spend money, because the way we, we make money, I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind telling you this at all, but like, so we all, we have a base salary and then you have talent. So talent is basically your endorsement fees. So you have a base salary, which is not very much. Um, it's almost like, think of it almost like a salesperson has, who's commissioned, right? You'll have a base, but you really make your money on your commissions. So it's like you have a base and then you make money on your endorsements, your, your talent. Um, and like, if you don't have many endorsements and someone comes and wants to spend money, it's a chance for you to make money. A lot of people will, will take the money. No judgment at all, by the way. But... I think that, uh, just my opinion, is if you take every advertising opportunity or endorsement opportunity that comes along and you're not really truly passionate about it or that business doesn't deliver the service they say they're going to deliver, um, then that becomes a reflection on you and then you're less believable and you're less likely to have success. Like I think one of the reasons that I have had a lot of success in that area is I am careful about who I choose to endorse because I know when I send a listener, when I send a listener to Brock or to Darren James or to GMFS or to Clegg's or to South Point Volkswagen, run down the list. I mean, you all know who my sponsors are. Like, I know they're going to take care of it. When you call Brandon Holly at Relief Windows, I know that dude is going to break his back to make sure you're thrilled. Like you just will not have a bad, he, you just will not have a bad experience. I know that. So it's like, it's easy for me to endorse Brandon and Relief Windows. It's easy for me to say, call Darren James. He's the best. Cause I know when you work with him, you're going to go, God, this dude's freaking awesome. Matt was right. And so then whenever I, I, your AC goes out and you hear Matt say, call River City's one hour air. Well, I know that your AC goes out at seven o'clock on a Saturday and you call River City's one hour air. They're going to call a technician who may come to your house right then at seven o'clock on a Saturday. And they're going to treat you awesome. And you're going, man, Matt was right. Oh, it's dinner time. Let's go get him a scone roll. Right. And I know the Wong family could treat you great. So anyway, so that's how I've always looked at it. It's sort of symbiotic. Like, I'll always give my content for free. I'll choose good people to endorse. I'll never ask you to pay me. I'll never put up paywalls or anything like that. I just hope that, and I'm never going to say like you have to buy anything from sponsors. It's just if you want to, if you need an AC repair, call River City's one hour air, you know, that sort of thing. I don't know. Does that make sense? But yes, but to answer your question, Samuel, yes. But the, the other benefit I have too is that 
I've done it for a long time and I've had a lot of success now for a long time. And because I've had a lot of success and I have a big book of business and sponsors that like I can pat, like, yo, I'll walk a lot of business. I don't think people realize that. Like there's a lot of people who have come and tried and wanted me to endorse them. I've said, no, I just don't think it's a fit. And I just wasn't interested. I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of salespeople who come to me and they're like, <laughs> who had that meeting with me when they get the, the, look from me and it's like, yeah, okay. Um, anyway, Bart Saint Germain, if aliens were to come to Louisiana, we would surely find a way to make them part of a gumbo. No, we don't need to kill aliens. There's no reason. Like, I mean, you're assuming Bart that they wouldn't take us out. You know what I mean? I mean, if they come here, they've got the technology to get here. We don't have the technology to get where they are. They'd probably take us out. Uh, let's see. Gary, good morning. Happy Saturday. Hope your weekend is full of fun and family. Thank you, Gary. Same to you, man. Sam, your greatest example is your Volkswagen sponsorship to wreck you had a while back. Yeah, man. Shoot. I tell you that all the time. I mean, I drive Volkswagen. Erica drives Volkswagen. I got smashed on the bridge by a, by a, a it was a GMC Sierra. Guy didn't even stop. Just smashed me. His car was totaled. Mine wasn't. You think, like, then, then in my brain, I go, okay, well, what if I had Drew in the car with me? Like, um, you, you don't think that that's validating? It's true. All right, let's see. Any more, any more, any more? Oh, we've got a few over here. Damon Gilmore. I thought it was funny hearing you talk about it. Okay, Erica, great thinking. Let's see. Brambo, JD5, the Heisman guy, will let it fly, be the guy to 14 and 1 national championship ride for the Tigers. I'm for it, man. I'm here for it. Damon Gilmore here in the pilots talk about seeing the UAPs as wild. Uh, Austin Kidder, talk about aliens is a great way to bridge the gap between baseball and football season. <laughs> uh, Trivia Carter, people lie. If we have aliens, why not show it? Um, I, I don't know trivia. I, I mean, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I mean, how would people react if they knew? But I, I think you get to the point, though, ultimately trivia, where if it is just a government conspiracy or cover-up, like, could all of the people who have given their testimony, like, could they all be making it up? Like, could the government really have, like, collaborated to be this deceptive I man like I don't know how all these people independent of each other keep sharing similar experiences and we just assume well they're all crazy I <laughs> Brennan Huff yes aliens Bill Freira what would Perkins need to do to get in the Heisman race well um he would have to have a double digit sack season double digit tackles for loss um, he'd have to have a monster game on a big stage late in the season. Like if LSU's in the SEC championship game and he has like four sacks, something like that. I mean, remember Adama Kinsu did that back in 2009. Uh, he was the in that big 12 championship game where Nebraska played Texas and he had like six sacks in the game or whatever it was. And, um, he just dominated the game and that was the last thing everybody saw. And they, a lot of people voted for him. And so he finished runner-up to Mark Ingram for the Heisman. It would have to be something like that. I just don't think it's possible. Uh, Brendan, why do we keep the alien stuff so secretive? Why can't they show us pictures of what they got? I don't know. Yeah. The only thing I think is they wonder, like, how, for our own safety, like, how would people react if they knew that there was an intelligent life? Like, what would that do? Uh, Brambo, JD5 is one of the Heisman after he leads LSU to convincing victory over Georgia in the SC Championship. Rematch, he'll have 3,800 yards, passing 600, rushing 40 total touchdowns before the game, 4,000 passing. Um, Carlton Cisco, Matt, congrats on 2,000. Thank you, man. Hit 2,000 shows on Thursday. Richard Head, while we're on this kind of different topic, have you ever heard a guest, had a guest about sports, weekly, monthly, that's not been paid, just wondering how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, for many, many years, Richard, uh, when we would have our weekly guests or like, that's just how that works. Um, 
when I started AFR in 2010, um, Panagriff at the time was the program director. And the one guest that he was like, I'm really bullish on was Mike Dettelier. He's like, he didn't tell me I had to have anybody on the show except Mike. Uh, and I'm glad he did. Mike, I love Mike. I wish, like, I'm, I'm still devastated that Mike doesn't come on anymore. You're not, that he can't come on anymore. And hopefully, if the day ever comes that he's not doing his daily show anymore, then we'll be able to resume that, and I would do it in a millisecond. But Mike was paid to come on weekly. Um, what we've started doing now is when we have commitments from people to come on weekly during that particular season, we try to get that segment sponsored, and then they get paid talent off the segment. So, for example, Mike Triplett. So Mike came on weekly last year during football season. We got that segment sponsored by Benny's Car Wash. And so part of that deal was Mike got paid from that sponsorship. Um, Richard said, Matt, I'm also a one-hour customer. Use your sponsors when I can. I appreciate it, man. Um, let's see. Where are we? Sorry, hang on one second. Jump back here. Okay. Um, Matt, uh, let's see. Do you think Bud wins tonight? Bud. Uh, Joseph Baggard, good morning. Brambo Spence is winning tonight. Um, I like Spence over Crawford. Um, Cold Case, I got sucked down a YouTube rabbit hole of some dude who was talking about it. He did the same thing dude said to the committee. The thing about the, the guy that spoke to the committee, though, was like, that's a... Air Force intelligence officer who was speaking under oath to Congress. Like, if he lying, he perjured himself. Uh, Austin Kidder, we would just let Matt do a scone rant on the aliens and they'd surrender. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm here for the aliens. Like, they had no reason to be scared of them. I mean, if, they're, if there's intelligent life and, and they, are, they are here, like, they presumably could have blown us to smithereens a long time ago if they wanted to. But why would they? Clearly there, there's no, like, would think, of it, think of it in reverse. Like, would we want to go just blow up someone else's planet? No. Like, why would we do that? Why would they do it? Um, uh, Cliff Nelson, good morning. Aliens have zero SC championship, though. That's true. Aliens ain't played nobody. Ryan Pike, Perkins wins the Heisman if he changes position to quarterback at those for approximately 5 million miles. Um, Cliff, definitely miss Mike D. Is Sean coming back? I need to confirm with Sean, but I'm sure he will. I don't know why there's any reason he wouldn't. So I'm, I'm anticipating having Sean back on this year. Uh, smash the like button, Sean, uh, Joseph. Smash that like button. Joey Metke, Matt, I'm curious on what movie got it right on what type of aliens are out there. I don't know. I don't really, I don't know that I've watched a lot of alien movies. Oh, Janet. Uh, Janet said, listen to AFR this morning. Did you ever update the Lewis vs. LSU lawsuit? Good catch, uh, Janet. I teased it for Kick Rocks, and then we never got to it because I think we went down that alien rabbit hole. But um, basically, a judge for, for the second, a second judge now has forced Sharon Lewis and her attorneys to pay Less Miles's court costs as they threw out the lawsuit as frivolous for the racketeering charges. Uh, have y'all seen Mars Attacks or Independence Day? I've seen Independence Day. I don't think I've seen Mars Attacks. I feel like aliens see us like an ant colony. They just sit back and watch us build. Probably right, Ryan. I mean, that probably is true. Um, 
I heard somebody say that they heard somebody say um, that based on the timeline, when aliens started to like pay attention to us was when we started testing the atomic bomb and the way that it was phrased, I forgot who said it, but it was like, the kids are playing with matches. We need to go make sure they don't destroy their planet, basically. Like they're just sitting there watching, like watching the kids play with matches. Like, hey, okay, now we got to intervene, that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Rooney, what's going on, man? Uh, Rooney email. Got to meet him yesterday at Sunshine. The, uh, the Auto Track King. Yeah, man. Dude, that was so much fun. Thank you for your hospitality. Uh, very, very much appreciated, man. Uh, Rooney's one of the, the guys I got to meet yesterday at Sunshine in Donaldsonville. Got to ride the... Uh, uh, Rooney, so what was that? What was the model that I, that I rode yesterday? Um, I know Christian said it on the video. I, I, I keep saying it's a tractor. I assume it's a tractor. I know it's, it's a giant piece of ag equipment. I would guess it's a tractor. Um, man, I think it was cool. Like, it was really like a... Um, it was like a big kid's toy, man. It was a really expensive toy. <laughs> but a big kid's toy. Uh, but I appreciate it, man. 8R280 is what I... What I so let's see, a John Deere 8R280. John Deere 8R280. There it is. An 8R280 tractor. Man, that thing was cool. That thing was really cool. <laughs> the tires were bigger than me. <laughs> If y'all haven't seen the video, go look at my Twitter. I'm sorry, my uh, my Instagram or my uh, or my Facebook page, and you'll see me. I, I videoed the, it was like five. It's like a five minute video of me in the tractor where we we wrote AFR into a field on the auto track. Uh, Oppenheimer is Prometheus. I don't know what that means. Um. All right. Um. Yeah, now the kids have matches. Time to put them in their place. Okay, I think we're done. All right, uh, we've been on here for an hour now. I got to get going. Y'all have a great day. Uh, thanks so much for watching. As always, shout out to Brock. Remember, Brock Rock and Wine is tonight. So if you're looking for something to do in the South Stadium Club at Tiger Stadium, put on some nice threads, get on by. Great location. I mean, what a venue to be in South Stadium Club. Tons of food, live music, and wine all benefiting the Brock Foundation. Tonight, brortho.com for tickets or tickets at the door. Um... Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com, commercial or residential. I want to remind y'all, man, y'all have commercial buildings. Know someone who does. Uh, got a leak, any type of roof issue. We do any type of commercial roofing. So do business with someone you know, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Okay. Y'all have an awesome day. Thanks so much for watching. Peace. I'm out of here.